you can see how this becomes a problem at scale. So that was just my realization, like, damn, marriage mm-hmm. might not be that, that appealing for that type of woman. Um, and likewise, I think men have their other reasons why they might be put off a bit by it. I have a lot of brothers I follow on Instagram and I see them, I know they're not married and I see them out there living a really high life and this car and that and whatever and Dubai and in where, wherever places. And I, I feel something in my heart, like feels sorry for them. Like I don't see that stuff anymore and think, damn, I, I wish I was living that. I actually feel, I look at them, I'm like, ah oh man, if only you could taste what I've got. Like if only you could see like this joy of having kids or, or, or coming home to a, a wife or, or whatever it is. That hadith Qudsi, that, that one hadith carried me for months probably, right? If I yeah. calculate yeah. it, yeah? That, I, 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 I lived on that, right? That was my fuel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Did you know this is episode 180 of Mind Heist? Uh, uh, con- congratulations to us yes bro yes bro what have you got to say the video is really delayed on my screen video is really delayed on my screen so it's throwing me off a little bit um i'm sitting on the floor my computer has died and um but we're making it happen and that's the important thing yeah I'm just trying to turn off my work phone because i've literally just finished work what's new with you bro how's it been without me well my my brother and friend Achitu went to Tunisia. Oh, you missed me, huh? How was it? Alhamdulillah, it was good. It was um, it was a uh, it was one of my many business trips. You know, <laughs> business, <man. laughs> it was an in and out no, mission. Yeah. yeah, it's very similar to last time. Although I think the goodwill of uh, my father's passing is kind of wearing off. <laughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? So now yeah. it's like okay, the real colours of people comes out. But right. alhamdulillah, you know, it is what it is. Um, no, it was good. It was good to be back in the, in, in the, in the Muslim lands. Um, <laughs> it's a bit warmer than I thought it would be, but uh, alas. How do you feel uh, about, um, last time you went, you said, you know, it's much more, how do you say it, practicing friendly than you thought. Is, it, is that still your feeling? Yeah, I mean, at least where I live, um, no issues like that whatsoever. Uh, you know, still the beards and the thobes and then the carbs and the jilbabs and the, obviously and, and everything else in between yes. uh, still exists. But um, yeah, people generally just getting on with their lives. Um, didn't feel anything, didn't, you know, didn't feel any sort of uh, discrimination or any sort of, uh, I think people, when people stare at you, it's probably because they can tell that you're not from around here, mm. you know, uh, especially when you're in a rural village. But um, not do, you, do you dress differently to like the average, do, would you say? I don't think I've got much choice these days. I just kind of wear what I can. Um, I try. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not wearing anything flashy or anything like that. Mm. Uh, you know, like, look at this T-shirt. I, I took this with me. It's just one color T-shirt. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But somehow people can just tell. I don't know if it's the walk or the, what, <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Interesting. Um, yeah, but have the level. I heard something today about Tunisia. I mean, the, the, the sheikh giving the khutbah, he was like, I mean, he, the khutbah wasn't about this, but he was talking about, um, you know, the Milad and Nabi or Mawlid. Uh-huh. And he was saying, he's like, you know, people ask, is it halal to celebrate the birth of the Prophet Yeah. He said, this yeah. is the wrong question. This is, this is a stupid question. He's like, what do you mean by uh, celebrate? Yeah. He's like, right. if... If I'm going to say, if I'm going to send salawat on the Prophet, that's one thing. If I'm going to, you know, they make special sweets for Mawlid. If I'm going to eat those sweets, that's one thing. He's like, but if you're talking about, he said in Jordan, they had celebrations for it. And people are smoking shisha and drinking alcohol. And he said in Tunisia, there was some uh, celebration and there was like belly dancers or something there. And he's like... So, hear about that. <laughs> so when you ask, is it allowed to celebrate? What do you mean by celebrate? <laughs> hey, I was not invited to that party. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Put it uh, on the record. Yeah, and apparently though there was a lot of uh, resistance to it in Tunisia, and the organisers were like, "Yeah, we didn't know this was going to happen," or something, <laughs> trying to cover themselves. Oh, I don't know. I mean, we have a. Uh, they had like a, this traditional dish they cook called zgugu. Ever heard oh, of zgugu? No, haven't. It's like it's like pine cone seeds. Okay. 
uh, and like we have pine cone trees or whatever they're called. Uh, pine trees, ours. yeah. Pine trees, yeah. Upper and uh, I think we have about kilos worth of seeds that we had mm. from those trees. And then they made that, my auntie and my gran and my mom helped as well to make that. Um, it's quite nice, man. But then it kind of dawned upon me after I was eating it. I was like, is, are we, is this for a particular cake? Like, what's coming up? <laughs> and then I, I realized that... They'll Wait, so what is it? Pine, pine seeds and what else? Oh, it's like, I can't, I don't know the process, how they make it. It's pine cone seeds, they mash it up, uh, and it's like cream and all this stuff. And it kind of comes out in, in like a mousse, like a brown mousse. And okay. then they sprinkle kind of nut, nuts and stuff on it. Oh, um, it's Google, yeah? It's, yeah, it's very nice. Interesting, very sounds nice. good. They have a dish here for Ashura. Oh, yeah? Ashura. Yeah, it's called Ashuri, or that's how they say it, uh, which is Ashuri. Ashura, I guess. Yeah, so mm, I haven't sure. eaten it though, but it's like... I think it's like a lot of nuts and dried um, dried fruits, and they even have chickpeas, I think, in it. So, like, I remember at the time of Ashura, the the supermarkets have like a Ashure pack where you it's all the ingredients to make that in one pack. So, uh, yeah, I love it. But yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of dishes actually that they've somehow wound up being associated with uh, with you know either legitimate or. I don't know. It depends your put start question. Yeah, uh, celebrations, but like even something as simple as like having uh, couscous on Fridays. Like I've uh, I've heard that's a thing, especially in Morocco. It is, yeah, uh, yeah. But it's a nice, it's a nice thing. It's like it's Friday. Let's mark it. It's Eid. Friday is Eid for the Muslim. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, if you can't tell, yeah, I'm on the floor, so I'm going to be moving around a lot. Because anyway, do your thing, um, bro. Do I am doing my thing. How are things though, bro? What's what's new with you? Bro, I've been thinking a lot and discussing a topic a oh, lot. Oh, that's good. You've been thinking. That's great. I'm glad. Yes, it's working <laughs> out there. No, there's a topic. Uh, I don't know if you had a topic in mind, but I had a topic. And uh, it's a topic we can talk about for a long time. Um, uh, and it, it's, it's kind of like marriage, but not just marriage. It's, I've I, I just been talking to people a lot about the problems people are having with marriage, like getting married, you could say. Um, Exciting. I've been trying to help people and... You know, some interesting things. So I'll just kick it off with a kind of a conversation I had with my wife and I kind of came to some realizations. So, for example, there are, there are a lot of women, like this was kind of about a specific person, but there are so many in her situation. So imagine in the UK, you know, a Muslim girl, she's growing up, she's going to go school, go college. Most of them go uni, right? When you go uni... You come out of uni, you know, many of them will get a job. So now you get a job, okay. You're living with your parents, you got your job, and uh, you might even be good at your job, but point is, you're working, you're making whatever, 2K a month, 3K a month, uh, and you're not, you don't have any financial responsibilities. So you're not paying for bills, you're not paying for rent. All that money is for you to enjoy for yourself. So yeah. next thing you know it, you've got a nice car, you've got um, whatever phone, this and that. Um, you go whenever you like, go out with your friends, have coffee and this and that, have steak dinners, you right? Um, nice. ne ne next thing you know it, um, you know, you, you think, you know, why, yeah, why don't, I, I see all these girls on Instagram, they're going off to Paris for the weekend, going to Barcelona. Let me, you know, let me go with my friends. Let me be that right. traveling kind of Traveling hijabi, I'm sure that's a, an Instagram handle oh, yes. there for, for you, right? Yeah. yeah. So next thing you know, it, you know, she's living that lifestyle and she's, she might even get promoted in this time and she's making more money and keeping more money and saving more money and just really enjoying, just really enjoying. Next thing you know, it, she might be 28 and she's enjoyed a lot of those years of doing these kind of things. And um, now when it comes to the idea of getting married, it... You can see how it's it, at the surface. It's a bit off-putting <laughs> because let's say your dad has uh, your dad, assuming she's the type that would be going out with her friends a lot, going traveling on her own or with her friends. Um, her dad's given her a lot of freedom, and she understands that her husband might not be that way, right? Um, she's had almost no responsibilities, and now she's going to be in a situation where she is has to be more responsible for a household, etc. She, she used to travel here and there and spend all her money however she likes. Now she might be thinking of maybe not working so much or um, right. spending on different things, right? 
So there's a big change. Um, she's faced with this change. And just purely on the short term, uh, kind of materialistic, dunya focused side of things, you can see how it's a bit off putting. It's a bit of a stark contrast, right? Um, and so, like, there was just one girl that we were talking about who was like very picky, it seems. And she was like mm. saying no to everyone. No, 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 no. And it, it, it could be that subconsciously she's thinking, like, look at my life. Like, this is what I want from my life. So yeah. if I'm going to change this situation, it, it's got to be some sort of big upgrade. And imagine that happening on a quite a big scale because a lot of women, they're going to uni and they're getting jobs and then they're in that situation. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's a bit of a fitna, you could say. Um, and the other thing is that what that whole lifestyle she's living has been sold to her maybe since she was born, right? Maybe not from her right. parents, but from the whole system, right? From schooling, from education, from work and all that, which is basically live a life of enjoyment, of pleasure, of traveling, of um, material things. And the thing that you would have to really value to quit that life and move to more to a life of substance and responsibility, that side of things like family, substance, purpose, legacy, um, sadaqa jariya, having children, family, yeah, that's not being promoted to her. Like, where is that going to be promoted to her unless she chooses to maybe study the Sharia or go to lectures or something like that? Who is pushing that concept of have a purposeful life, have children, have a family, it's beautiful, it's fulfilling, right? Everyone is pushing the other side of things, which is instant gratification, enjoyment, pleasures, desire, dunya, right? So that is a predicament. And, you know, because a lot of people going through this system... Um, they, 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 they're being promoted those ideas and not the other ideas. You can see how this becomes a problem at scale. So that was just my realization, like, damn, marriage mm -hmm. might not be that, that appealing for that type of woman. Um, and likewise, I think men have their other reasons why they might be put off a bit by it. But, and that, you know, you see what I mean, like how this becomes a bit of a problem at scale. Hmm. Although... I'd, I'd push back and say your idea of marriage doesn't appeal to that person. I think their idea of marriage could be something where whoever it is they're looking for is similar to them, right? Whoever it is they're looking for isn't expecting them to, I don't know, stay at home or not work or not chase their dreams or hustle or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, people that are living that kind of lifestyle are going to be wanting someone who can upkeep it, uh, who can participate in it, who can you know collaborate with it. Um, and on the other side of saying, oh, we don't know who, like, we don't, who, who inspires or who encourages or who influences uh, men and women to live more family centered lives or aspire for more family centered lives. Um, I don't know who inspired you, who inspired us, who inspired our wives. You know, my wife, every time she finds some new influencer, it's someone who is um, family orientated, baking, homemade this, homemade that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, modest whatever and muslim and non-muslim and then the algorithm will feed off of that and keep throwing more <laughs> so i think a lot of it is going to be down to personal taste and i think um you know for that particular person um that you kind of mentioned the the archetype of hey if you find someone like you like you and, and that makes you happy go for it if you don't find anyone you don't want to get married then don't get married like if you want to carry on living that life then carry on living that life the only the only uh caveat to that is if they're feeling this pressure from outside to get married and then they're doing it because of the pressure as opposed to what they actually want um and i wouldn't want to encourage anyone to get married if they don't want to because then you're just going to ruin someone else's life by being in something that you don't want to be in and yeah. you're not going to have your heart and soul in so um yeah i think i think from it's easy to get confused from the outset and think oh this is detrimental or this isn't but i think a lot of the time you got you got to kind of look out for number one bro do you know what I mean? Like, as much as I might have concern for my sisters and think, oh, my, my poor sisters out there living that lifestyle but won't be able to get married, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's up to them. Do you know what I mean? They want to have a 180 and, and live a, a completely different lifestyle and then realize, oh, no, do you know what? Actually, I do value family and I want to settle down. The only other thing we could say is that maybe in the future they may regret some decisions. But then again, we all have decisions we regret in the future, don't we? We all think we could have done something differently or... 
So I think that's just their battle. Um, and they may not regret it. They may carry on living like that forever. But um, you, I'm sure you've probably come across older generations, men and women, who kind of don't know when to grow up, <laughs> right? So, like, they could be in their 50s, 60s, still living a lifestyle that you think, hey, I'm, I'm like, coming up to 30 and I'm kind of, I'm living like I should be at your age and you're kind of living like most of my peers. What's, what's going on there, right? Don't know when, the, when, the, when to settle down, so to speak. So it's down to them. Down to them. But I think there is more of an objective measure of whether that's a good lifestyle to lead or not. Um, good, yeah, Islamically against Islam. Well, abso- against, absolutely, that, that's yeah. the that's the criteria by which we measure, right? Like, mm. and even even non-Muslims would agree to this. Those who have wisdom or experience, they would they would say a life of pursuing material pleasures versus a purposeful life. There's no comparing. Mm. There's no comparing, right? Um, and so, yes, it's it's a, of course it's their it's their um, problem that they're going to have to deal with if it becomes a problem for them, which it probably will uh, will do if they stick like that. But I'm talking about, I guess, from a more macro perspective, um, it, it's not good for society to have single people. Firstly, mm. it's not good. Um, secondly, it's like, that's what I'm saying, bro. You're saying your wife finds these certain niche Instagrammers. I'm saying every level of the system is pushing a certain narrative, right? From the UN to the governments, to the corporations, to the Instagrammers as well, like the bigger ones, they're all pushing. And I'm not even going to use the word feminism because I had another, um, insight as well. It's individualism, selfishness, and chasing desires, and focusing on the dunya. That's what it is. Mm. Feminism is just the women's brand of that, okay? Right. But that's what it is, ultimately. And, and as Muslims, we know that's not good. And indulging too much in dunya takes you away from akhirah, right? It's dangerous for your akhirah to do that. And by the way, I'm not saying that I'm not, like, sucked into that, it, definitely in some parts. I'm just saying this becomes now a problem not just like it becomes a problem for those sisters because it's it's a problem that we recognize yani that we're taught to be careful of and so of course it's a problem for yeah. them but then it becomes a problem wider because now um her her parents might be burdened burdened by uh, whatever happens to her later on um the men who are looking to get married maybe they don't find women to get married and it becomes a societal problem and we don't have we're not individuals we can't say i just do me and it only affects me no, that, that's just completely against the reality. So, um, so yeah, that's what I would say, bro. Like, this is not, it's not as simple as a personal preference. This is a problem, uh, f- whether people realize it or not. And part of the analysis of that observation of the pro- the fact that it's a problem does come from our guidance, Yanni. Mm. Do you, I mean, I know we're using a, a female example, but I think the same thing is, quite rampant in men as well you know I this think. is yeah th- i'm not even like the topic is not even about women it's just that's one kind of example yeah. that uh, i thought it was it was quite concrete and i had a realization about it um so yeah it, it, there is a different uh phenomenon for men i think like dude there was someone in our in our my nice uh, telegram group that was like telling everyone forget about uh getting married you should be focusing on making as much money as possible uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone kind of jumped on him. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, absolutely. That was the a thing is with one. The, the thing is, yeah. Uh, and let's be uh, let's be real about it. Uh, any sort of delay like that, I can't speak for women because I wouldn't know the the you know the makeup of women in terms of the, how they think, right? But uh, men, bro, they're, they're not, they men have. Uh, Let's be honest, men have desires, right? And pushing that back just leaves more room for mistakes, more room for sin, more room for mingling with the opposite gender, and then never being satisfied because you've probably gone through uh, so many, I don't know, relationships and whatever, and actually yeah. can never settle for one person because you always think the grass is green on the mm. other side. Or four right? people. But then look at it. Well, there you go. <laughs> but then think about the person who actually, uh, you know, didn't, didn't even, it's not about... It's not about committing those sins or making those mistakes. It's about never even giving them time, never giving themselves time to make those mistakes, right? Think about people like, um, 
that never left home, right, before they got married, that never went out to uni, never lived that kind of yeah. lifestyle. I mean, I don't know, I'm not bragging, but I was one of them. It doesn't mean I didn't make mistakes. It just means I was one of them. But I could see that there's a lot of things that I didn't actually have a gap for that would enter, right? Sure. I didn't live amongst people that could have negatively influenced me in like very menacing ways, right? Um, so that's that's the kind of thing that I think is a benefit, a strong benefit. And I think, I think I'm still too young to really appreciate the payoff of that. Right. I think that's not going to come until I'm older, mm. like doing like having a family younger, such as ourselves, younger, I don't know, but younger in terms of the, the, the rest of the Western world. I think uh, the payoff of that, we're going to feel that when we're like 45, 50, like those kind no real, like that's a real investment, like return on investment. When I was walking up the stairs today with my son and, um, just, uh, you know, he's come back home from school, walking up the stairs, he's walking in front of me and it just hit me, bro. I was like, dude, he's grown so much. Like, and I'm just talking to him like he's just a dude. Like, I'm not talking to him like he's a three-year-old. He's five now. So I was just like, wow. Like, I was like a blink of an eye. I felt like I only got married yesterday. But but here he is, like, walking and talking. And I don't feel like I've got any older since the day he was born. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that was, I just had a quick little return on investment in my head thinking, that was a good decision. Like mm. having him like pretty much soon after I got married, that was a really good decision. And he literally just walked in because we're about to go out after the podcast. We're going to go out. He walked in here and he was all dressed up. And we were just like, what? Like he, he dressed himself up nicely, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he put on his nice clothes mm. with nothing was the wrong way around. His jumper was all tucked. Like everything was good. Mm. I was like, I'm worried about like having, not worried, but like you get that fear sometimes like, oh, I want to have a big family. I want to have a big family. I want to have them all at once thinking that they're all going to be toddlers forever. <laughs> right? That's true. When he walked in, when he walked in and he was all dressed, I was like, sweet. I could like tell him to go and get something and he would just get it or do something. He would just do it. And that's an extra pair of hands that we have for the family. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that, that return on investment. Imagine that bro, um, at, you know, in your fifties and you've just got, I don't know, teenage kids or, you know, young adults. That to bills. support you. Taking that tax, bro. <laughs> 20% tax on all your wages. <laughs> yeah, but but then, you know, like like I said. I call that the, the, the the those... ihsana tax. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. But look, as you mentioned, people won't appreciate that unless they've uh, felt like it was missing in their lives because they're not gonna they're not gonna appreciate that until they've missed out. You know, there's I, I always I always bring it back to my dad and how like I felt like that age gap between me and my dad was quite big. So I really wanted to kind of change that for my kids. Mm -hmm. But these people that you're talking about, these archetypes that we're talking about, I suppose we should say. Yeah. Um, yeah, if, if if having a family is something they fear or committing is something they fear, yeah. then they will regret it later on because yeah. they're going to look around them and see, oh my God, everybody's, you know, everyone's got someone and I've got no one. Because everyone gets too busy. Those link-ups, chilling with your friends, all of that, it kind of goes out the window Yeah. when everyone else starts settling down, has families, has responsibilities. And then you're sitting there on your own like, ah, I should have, I could have, ah, now I'm on my own. What do I do? You know. There's only so many photos you can take on the Mostar Bridge. Only so many shishas you can smoke. <laughs> only so many circles that you can blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And, and the thing is like, this is what, what the angle I'm approaching this is. You could say it's not their fault at all. You know, this is the message being sent out there, you know. Um, and unfortunately, the message of individualism goes against the fitrah, goes against what you're saying, like that uh, longing for companionship or the longing for meaning and, and significance in your life. Um, and so, you know, if we don't spread that message, then we're failing the next generation you know yeah. but you know you said you said where did we get that from like that we wanted to have families or whatever i think i think i it was you know like the concept of getting married should i get married when should i get married it didn't really cross my mind it's just like well i'm a human so i'm gonna get married <laughs> And right. whenever I'm I'm going to get married, I guess, when I can provide for someone. That was what I was thinking. Um, the problem now is that the and OK, so, yeah, this topic of where do we get the influences from? I feel like my generation, 
it was still uh, it was it, i feel like a lot of things changed after my generation right like so they all say so yeah maybe that's true but people that are like maybe three or four years plus younger than me they don't seem to have th these certain things for example the the default thought of of course i'm going to get married and i want to get married and i want to have kids like some people even muslims i'm hearing them they're they're like 27 maybe they're even married and they're like yeah i just don't know if i want kids it's like what is that a decision to make <laughs> is no, that even right. a thing like do you decide to have or not have kids so my generation i don't think we questioned it and where did i get it from it's just it was everywhere there was no one around me saying should i have kids or should i get married everyone as long as they could they were getting married and they were having kids right um yeah. and obviously my parents would uh play a role in that and stuff as well um uh, yeah my my parents i guess the way they raised me as well was that kind of thing but now it's almost like we need to do a whole pr campaign about why you should get married <laughs> you know mm. versus living that single life and delaying um responsibility um yeah. i think you know, look it, it, Think about it in the sense that, yeah, what you said about social media and about all these sort of pressures and stuff. Dude, like people are, what was it? I saw a, I was watching some YouTube like entrepreneur stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. And the recommendations were flowing. Bro, don't and make like that some, phase, bro. You were watching it. No. You enjoyed no, 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 it. Was, because the one that came up wasn't the one I clicked on. It just came up. But it was oh, like some 19-year-old. Okay. Right. It was some 19-year-old sort of, uh, I don't know, entrepreneur of something. He, I can't remember what he did for money. Okay. But the way he spoke, bro, he was like, you know, like, you're not going to get rich quick, guys. Like, this took me so many years. I'm like, dude, you're 19. What do you mean so many years? It must have taken you, what, four years maximum? That's nothing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's warping the, the idea of hard work for people. And it's warping the idea of what should be expected as a 20-year-old, as a 19-year-old, as a 23-year-old, that you should have it all by now. You know, you see it all the time, like, dude, I'm 24 and I still haven't got my life together, man. And it's, it's like, and? Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't really have it together anyway until maybe 40, you know, whatever then, I don't know, whatever your idea is of success right now yeah. is kind of here. And it's like live fast, die young kind of attitude where we need to have it all by now. Mm. Um, and yeah, people do aspire to that. I think people have serious uh, material dreams and, um, to speak for myself i definitely didn't and i think that was my problem <laughs> i probably thought all i wanted to do bro was find someone get married have a family yeah once i'd done that i was like oh what what do i want in life now yeah oh and then suddenly my wants kind of went out the window because my wife i need is prior to her my kids want things my my extended family need help and i'm like oh that's what i need the material stuff for i should probably go and do mm. something about that but it wasn't the other way around. Mm, like some people, the other way yeah. around. They're like, oh, before I get married, I need everything. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fake. Mm. That's it. That's my statement. I think the fact that people say, I'm going to delay because I want to make money and I want to do this, it's all fake because that can't motivate you. You don't even know who that person is. You can't, people that try and motivate themselves with a fictitious wife that say, oh, when I have a wife, she's going to be, dude, you're making stuff up. Just admit you're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for yourself. You want money for yourself. You don't want to tie yourself down. Don't well, maybe they want to making... attract a certain type of woman. Even so, they won't be satisfied with whoever comes along because it would have been too easy because they would have just been like, oh, you're, you're coming up to me for the money. I want someone to love me for who I am. And like you said about that, that archetype of being too picky, too picky, the mm -hmm. amount of brothers I've had in the back of my car or the side of my car or passenger seat of my car, and I'm like, what is stopping you from getting married? Oh, I haven't got the right one. What about that sister that you spoke to the other day? Well, blah, 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 blah. What about the other marriage meeting that, that happened last month? Well, you know, this and this and this, and she said this one thing. I was like, so how many people do you think don't have one things? Everybody's got one thing. At least pick your poison. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Get yeah. on with it. Um, but yeah, I think I just see through that kind of excuse. Mm. But do you agree? What, the pe people are too picky or what? Yeah, like people uh, people just, uh, yeah, that, that, that excuse that they keep throwing around. Oh, like, like oh, when this happens, mean? then that. Yeah. No, that's a complete lie. And it goes against uh, what we know about Qadr and stuff, right? It's like... When you so that guy in the group said when you become a uh, you have to focus on making money and when you make your millions then uh, get a woman in your life 
Well, what if you never make millions? It's not yeah. a, it's not a simple case of follow the recipe and make millions because out of a hundred people following that recipe, Allah will write some of them to make the millions and some not. So d you should never have a good deed or an important thing contingent on something that really you don't know if it will happen. You know, mm. so you you there are some yeah you know, like we discussed with Kaya last episode like. There are some things where it's like, okay, when I, what we said in the episode was if you make enough money so that you could, you know, provide shelter and food and stuff, and at the end of the month you have zero or more in your bank account, then get married, right? You're good to go. If you yeah. go below, if you're below that, if you're negative every month, then okay, that's a point where we might say, okay, maybe you're getting into irresponsible territory kind of thing. Um, I think it so, shows you how, yeah. how, how, merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because even even so with mm. that advice that you've just given mm. some people still have fear enter their heart especially when it comes to like having kids I of can't course. have kids now yeah, etc et yeah. but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about not you know do not uh, essentially you know fear poverty through children yani so that's shaitan that's shaitan putting fear in your heart there yeah. don't fear because Allah will provide for them mm. Allah will provide and that that concept that entire concept is just a beautiful bit of mercy makes you because courageous Allah didn't Absolutely, I'm reading. I'm listening to Courage is Calling at the moment. Is that mm -hmm. the name of the book? I think so. Yeah, mm. uh, I, I told my wife bro, before I went to Tunisia. I said, "Oh, I've just downloaded this. Like, uh, feel free to listen to it when I'm done." But I said, "Be but be careful because I might do some crazy things when I come back because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm easily uh, easily influenced like that." But no, absolutely, um, yeah, it's it's got to be done. You just got to take that step. You just got to do it, and I think. Uh, you've got to be pragmatic as well about the people that you look, the potential spouses that are out there. Mm. Um, yeah, there are some serious big no go areas, of course. You know, mm. if you're thoped up practicing whatever, and you're going for someone who's the complete opposite of that, and that's a that's an obvious sort of uh, failure waiting to happen. Mm. But some people, I think, they just they get picky over some pathetic things, bro. Um, you know. Just really, not even like, you know, you could have a, a very attractive uh, potential person, but then there's just one thing about maybe their ear, right? <laughs> <laughs> or their, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, honestly, or, or, or the way they walk, or are there a few, are there a few inches too short, I need to find the perfect person. It's like we're playing a video game. Like, what is this? Yeah, it's like, you know, those <laughs> RPGs where it's like, yeah, okay, bro. upgrade this part of my character. <laughs> 100%, bro, 100%. But you know what? No, I, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm not officially giving this advice, but I do feel like if you... Some people, they make those calls o over, like, messaging. You're messaging someone asking all the questions, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you met them in person, sometimes... Th something happens and you just like you're like cool with those compromises or whatever right like yeah just when it's more like human to human proper communication but imagine if if she sent you let's say a picture over an app or whatever it is and you're like zooming in and analyzing or or she tells you something about her and you don't like it and you just sit and thinking about how oh, do i like doing it? no but when you meet them and the chemistry might cause you to overlook some of those things you know yeah, 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 yeah. Or even the, sometimes, bro. Like some, sometimes I'm sure some people they were they they met someone and they they weren't really feeling it. But then the pressure of the moment and the pressure of the parents and stuff caused them to just go along with it, and then <laughs> they were happy. Yeah, with it yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a, it's a blessing, bro. And and bro, istikhara yeah. can come into that as well and be like, Always. yeah, that ended up being Always. the best thing. That's got to be like your, that has got to be in your arsenal, on your utility belt every single day. Mm. It's the harder, like I'm trying to deploy it whenever I can, whenever I need to. Yeah. Bro, I am like, you know, I'll, I'll go on air and I'll say it. I love my wife, like I, 100%. You know, that's, I'm not, not, no doubt about it. And like I, w I was sat here earlier, we were just having a chat and she brings up her phone. She goes, look at all this stuff I baked. I, like I made a collar because she's been baking for years, right? So she had this gallery of stuff she baked. I was just flicking through that. And I was like, you know what? I made the best decision of my life marrying this woman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because this stuff is amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? So the only thing, and, I, and I'll be honest, the only thing I thought I, I compromised, quote unquote, mm. is that well, she was from Algeria and I wasn't. Right. Mm. So it added this extra dynamic of... No uh, offense taken. You know, 
No, it's not about that. <laughs> it's not about that. It's not about that. Some people might think, oh, maybe I phrased that wrong. But it's more about dividing the family into different. So look, yeah, for example, yeah. if something happened to her, her, you know, to her family members in Algeria, I've got to accommodate for maybe going to Morocco sometimes, going to Tunisia sometimes, going to, to Algeria sometimes. And unless I'm a, a wealthy man, those flight tickets are going to be tough. Yeah, and that was the that was the one that. thing. Mm. That was the one thing that my dad told me. My, mm. my dad was like. Uh, that was my, my dad's only sort of hesitancy was that you're going to split yourself up to you're going to spread yourself too thin mm. and i was like but dad there's nobody like this you know there's nobody like this and i guess he just kind of because at the end of the day he married moroccan women so what can i say yeah, that's <laughs> Do you know what i mean that's true. no but alhamdulillah bro and like i said uh uh you know tawakkul first and foremost istikhara mm. go for it it's istikhara just, and go for it mm. not istikhara and like Wait, wait for, for a the dream. dream. Although I did have a dream, but that's another story for another day. Um, but no, yeah, istikhara and go for it. And if it's not meant to be, something will, you know, the obstacle will, will present yeah. itself quite And clearly. istishara as well. Istishara with people who are married and a bit mature and these kind of things, not with your single friends who are going to be as make you pickier, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. There was one, um, Maybe. this guy told me, there's a Somali guy apparently that, lives somewhere around here and he owns like half of the Somali economy. Yeah, he's very rich, mashallah. And he was giving advice. He's like, if you want to be rich, then marry. Yeah. He's like, that's what I experienced. And I think he has multiple wives. I think it's quite common in Somalia. So it's like, if you want more risk, then just marry again and just marry again and then have more kids and more kids. Just the more you do that, the more you make money. That's what his advice was, yeah. I mean. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. Hands down. You know, it's, it's, it's guaranteed, bro. It's the baraka. I see it now in life, all I see. And I am so, um, I'm so grateful that I was guided to make those brave decisions because I think they were brave decisions, especially for someone at that age. Um, yeah. It, the whole marriage thing, rewinding back to like when I first thought about getting married, mm. was definitely like the first week when I started practicing because that's what everyone was telling me to do. So yeah, there was peer pressure, but alhamdulillah, there was I think it was positive peer pressure to kind of get that back into mm. my mind. But it's not something alien. I think for people who have healthy family relationships coming up, like growing up, you know, you've got a healthy uh, relationship between your mother and father, uh, extended family. There's family gatherings. There's family atmosphere. You will grow uh, not only warm to that, but nostalgic for that when you're older as well. And when family starts growing apart for yeah. no means of your, so for no like no reason, of, no reason for yourself to be blamed, families do grow apart. Like my cousin and I were like this, bro, back in the day, and now like hardly speak to each other because he's always so busy, and I'm busy as well, I guess. Um, so I I, I'm, I long for that. And I'm thinking, oh, do you know what? I miss those days when the dinner table was just full of people. I want to make that. I want to mm. do that again. Mm. And now I know. And may Allah keep us all alive and a uh, long and a prosperous life. But in the Allah, a day will come where my table is full because of the family that I've, you know, brought into, well, through the permission of Allah, brought into this world, you know? Yes. Yes, uh, but I didn't want to make this, and I'm not saying it is, but it's half going in that direction. It's not a bashing session of people that think a certain way. It's more like, why are they thinking that way? And, and it's like the messaging, it's not just the messaging either. It's sometimes it's the sad reality, bro. For example, you just mm -hmm. mentioned people that have, uh, that come from healthy r families, right? Yeah. So for example, the generation com coming up now, quite a few of them will have been ha had their parents divorced yeah straight away that gives them a kind of subconscious strike against marriage perhaps right yeah 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 um yeah. the next thing is you know uh muhammad was telling me some uh, abu khadija he was telling me about a few brothers he met recently they've all been divorced they're like in their 40s and they had a very painful divorce they can't see their kids and all of that so again you hear these stories and from the men's side might put them off right um, the mm -hmm. women will have their own stories of different things that will put them off. Then you have the issue of uh, apps, you know, marriage apps. It gives you this illusion or this feeling like there's so many to choose from. And it's kind of that yes. um, inability it's to pick. Uh, what's it called? The, para, the paradox of choice, right? It's like yeah, when there's so yeah, much yeah. to choose, you can't choose. Um, so there are so many factors where it's like, it's difficult, bro. It can be difficult. Oh. And I think... You know, one thing that just keeps coming up in terms of a kind of solution is 
it sounds cliche, but it's like really iman and like aqidah and like understanding the names and attributes of Allah and how that will manifest in your life. That is a really good starting point because it will help you mm -hmm. with, for example, the thing, uh, understanding qadr, understanding rizq, where it comes from, understanding tawakkul, um, having a bit of that um, push, like, let me go for it, you know, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ All these, th it gives you that strength. It gives you even, yeah, too many men have gone to propose in desperation mode, with no leverage, with no ability mm. to say, if we get married, I don't, I'm, I don't want that, I'm, I'm not accepting that, or, you know, she has something which is, it's not an orange flag, it's a red flag for him, but just for the sake of going forward with it, because he's got a scarcity mindset, maybe he went forward with it and maybe he regret that later. But hmm. if he had the understanding that, that my wife is like, Allah will provide my wife. I don't have to compromise on important things. Yeah. All these things put together put you in a completely different space mentally to have, you know, a healthy marriage and go through the process, inshallah, with less pain. And even yeah. if it, even if, you know, I can't imagine what it's like. Imagine you're a sister. And you know the reality that a lot of a lot of your attractiveness is just how you look, and it's like kind of like how can you change how you look, right? Um, yeah. So imagine getting, you know, I could just imagine like you send over your picture, and then a day later they're like, oh, you know, we don't think we're a good match. Oh, yeah? no, oh, so that hurts. <laughs> you can imagine, right? So there yeah. are many there are many things that would make it heartbreaking potentially. But again, it comes back to uh, trusting in Allah, having being pleased with the qadr of Allah and believing that Allah, if you're a believer and you, you have a good opinion of Allah, he'll give the best for you. And this is yeah. all you could say cliche stuff. But this is the thing, like there are strategies thrown out all over the place. You can watch 100 YouTube videos with all different ideas and tactics when it comes to marriage and this and that. But actually implementing those things is another thing. And, and the meta the meta action or the meta skill or the meta strategy is, I think this, is having, get, becoming resilient, becoming, having a good mindset, improving yourself through in, improving your Iman, improving your uh, beliefs about Allah, etc. Of course. And look, uh, for those that are, you know, in that position, it doesn't just end there though. That's the thing. Mm. People think they're going to get married and that perfect person they found is perfect. The relationship then is perfect. Relationships need work, require work. It's a skill. Like, it's a skill, but it's also you need to be prepared to grow, to adapt, to change, to understand each other, yeah. to set relationship goals that you both strive towards. Um, it's Hashtag. not just like a, bro. It's not just a one way street. Like, it, like I'm confident in in the fact that, you know, when we, me and my missus got married, um, you know, we didn't know each other that well. Do you know what I mean? We didn't know each other. And then, yes, we did clash and stuff and we did argue and stuff and whatever we did. But I am definitely like confident, like who we are now is so much stronger than who we were before. You know, even even three years ago, we've been married for what, six years. Um, but the, the marriage process took a while. So I've probably known we've probably known each other for like eight years, really. So let's just throw a decade on it. <laughs> let's just keep adding Round that up. experience. <laughs> <laughs> Round it up. No, but like for real, bro, it's, um, yeah, it, it takes work. And the reason, like you said, it's easy for someone to just swipe left on life and just think someone else has got it better, right? Is it left or right? I haven't got a clue. But it's one of the directions. <laughs> swipe, swipe something. Swipe, swipe away on this and get another life. And maybe it's better on the other side. Um, because really and truthfully, uh, you are going to slack as a husband. Your wife's going to slack sometimes as a wife. But if you can't refocus and try and make that relationship better again by effort on both sides, then you're constantly just going to go, oh, but look, so-and-so has it better. Oh, no, look, that person over there, actually, they could make a better wife and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And suddenly you're back in square one, being dissatisfied and looking elsewhere and ruining a, basically a family that you've rushed into because you haven't been prepared mentally to allow this stage of your life to be one of growth, not one of, uh, I don't know, perpetuity. And it's always going to be like this, right? So there's that to be considerate of as well. Those people that are getting married young uh, need to be prepared or those who are being picky and then suddenly through some miracle have found the perfect person need to be prepared to put in work as well. It doesn't just end there, right? 
Yeah. Yes. It's a skill like yes. any other thing. When you start work, you even if you're qualified, let's say engineer, you get an engineering job, that company will train you on specifically how to do the engineering for their company. Right. Yeah. And that process of learning, it will take six months. And then after that, they'll be like, okay, now you've been here for six months. So now we expect more from you. So now there's more skills to develop and anything like, I think that's a way of um, seeing marriage, like being good at being married. You could, you could like, you could just focus it down really to communicating uh, well, which includes listening. Um, that's a skill, Yanni. So if you're not good at it from day one, um, yeah, I think if it's, it's good if people are aware of that. And I guess this is what like maybe premarital counseling will do is teach mm. people these kind of things that, oh, um, you will have to communicate and communicate is meaning means this and it means listening and it means explaining in clear language and blah, 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 blah. And if you don't communicate like that, you're going to assume this of each other and it's going to all break down. Right. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Th these are also like essential things actually on. Yeah, the previous episode that I did with Kaya, um, Malik, which I, I know, like we work together, he wrote, he said, I took two things away from this. And I, for me, I thought this is basic, but, you know, this is the curse of knowledge where, because you know something, you assume everyone else knows it. He said, um, um, a, a woman will be similar to her mother. She'll like model and mirror her mother and she will look up to and respect uh, a man like her father. So yeah. just that little thing, yeah, which I think I kind of, it solidified in my head when I read uh, maybe Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, maybe it was that book. But that's something that I read 10 years ago from a book and then it kind of stuck in my head. But there are people out there that don't know that and knowing that would definitely help them in the marriage process. So there is the tawakkul, there is the iman and these things. And then there are also some of these strategic pieces of knowledge that really yeah. help as well. Yeah. They will, they, they, on top of that, to add another layer of that, they'll also fear the flaws of those people. They will fear the flaws that maybe hurt and damaged them when, when they were young, those, like those scars that are still oh, there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. it's not everybody's going to have, um, you know, not everyone's going to have the most uh, beautiful and safe environment to, be, to, to, to grow up in. So they're going to have these scars that maybe mm. uh, they don't reignite themselves during the marriage process. And it could be, you know, it could be anything really. So you have to be conscious of that, conscious of what you're fe fearful of, but also conscious mm. of what you've modeled yourself o o on as well, if that makes sense. Um, Bro, but yeah. you know, you know, you were talking about like being picky and swiping and this and that. Bro, I think, like, I, I, I haven't really thought about this much in general in my life, but as I realize more and more, makeup is evil. <laughs> makeup is evil it's the mind height it, exclusive right there <laughs> bro it's it's really really bad like when you just really think about it so check it out yeah from a man's perspective it's evil because obviously it's harder to lower your gaze all this kind of stuff but like uh, m like 18 year old me I, I think back then maybe women wore less makeup anyway possibly but I didn't mm. know what makeup was and wasn't right yeah, like yeah, I yeah, did, yeah. I, if someone's wearing makeup i don't know if you ask me i'll be like well, i don't know like i don't know what it looks like right um and so what that would do and maybe many many young men are um like that as well where it's like they think that women just look like that yeah right 100%. and so like it, when it comes down to what who you find attractive if you go and you know you're meeting someone for marriage and she's not wearing makeup you might be be like, oh, that's not like the other 99% of women that I see in the yeah, street, yeah, yeah. right? That's one problem. The other problem is, let's say you meet her and she is wearing makeup, then when you get married, you're like, whoa, right? What happened? And all these, all these kind of uh, issues, well, uh, Yanni, it goes very deep and it's, it, it feels like a, it's a big deception, bro. It's such a big deception. Then on the women's side, can you imagine like, if 90 whatever percent of women are wearing makeup every day outside, what would that do to the one who doesn't wear makeup and the pressure she would feel to, to wear it and yeah. uh, what it would I do mean, in terms of, like, I don't know what it's like, but imagine like a lot of my value as a man I feel is in providing. And so imagine mm. I'm a broke guy. That's what a girl that feels ugly will feel like. You know what I mean? Right. And so it, it's a very big fitna for men and women. It's, it's a big problem, bro. It's a big problem. Gonna... I feel like... 
We should just boycott all this stuff. I was going to say you're going to boycott. Bro, makeup has its place in the house, bro. Maybe out there, not so much. Absolutely. But if it was if it was kept in the house, it wouldn't cause the issues I just described, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, I think it absolutely has its place in the house, bro. I think, um, yeah, definitely the issues it causes out there. Bro, you reminded me when you, when you were talking. I remember when I was at school and some girl took out her hair extensions, like in class. <laughs> and I, it was, I didn't even know they were, th- I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> I was freaking out. I was uh, <laughs> I just didn't know what was going on. I was so Actually, I didn't know that existed until maybe two years ago myself. Bro, they're, they're like actual clips, bro. It's like a clip. It comes out and there's like mm. just a long piece of hair attached. I was so confused. I thought it was a medical condition or something. Do you remember that but, scene uh, from Men in Black where the cockroach guy peels his uh, head back? Oh, dude. That Is that what it was classic. like, yeah? <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> sugar water. You wanted sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it he's like he's like put your hands on your head he's like oh like this and then he pulls the yeah yeah <laughs> oh man yeah that's pretty much what it is because all of that is makeup and then you take take it off and it's a cockroach yes <laughs> yes many black reference guys watch it if you haven't oh don't watch it i'm not encouraging anything don't worry <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a clean movie it's like 2000 it came out or something like that something like that bro yeah god <laughs> classic bro but let's not get into will smith bro because we could be talking forever <laughs> um no alhamdulillah man um yeah so what do you recommend to these uh to these uh sisters because to be honest think about it um you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't i think a lot of sisters struggle because they have this uh nagging voice in their heads where it's like oh you've got that thing on you're not going to get any, you know, how, how's everyone going to find you? I remember that was like discourse that was thrown around mm. when, uh, when my, uh, my sister started wearing a uh, jilbab, niqab, et cetera. Mm. I just remember people saying like family members and other people, I can't remember who saying stuff like, well, how do you expect to get married with that thing on? Like, who's going to find you? Like, who's going to see you? Or, who's going to notice you to come and ask for your hand and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and especially when you've started doing that, of course you're going to have the fear. And I can imagine I can imagine it's not easy for sisters. I no way will I ever say that I know what it feels like. Of course I don't. <laughs> but um, I think it's it's important to f- turn back to Allah in those situations, to have that tawakkul, to realize I'm doing it for Allah, visa billah. I'm doing it for Allah first and foremost, sorry. And um, Allah's a provider, you know. Exactly. Whoever, whoever's meant to knock on the door, knock on the door. That's that. That's that message we already gave, which I'm not saying is like the be all end all. You need some practical like strategies as well, perhaps. But it is the starting point for sure, I mm. would say. And, yeah. um, you know, I remember, bro, like there was a, I would say, you know, the quote unquote difficult part of my life where this thinking changed everything for me. You know, without that, I was really feeling very down. Yeah, um, of course. You know, because again, it comes back to like, how do you value yourself? So I was valuing myself by being able to make money and I was not making money or not making much money. And it, it 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 went on for a long time like that and i'm just like what the hell why is it like either why is it not happening or questioning like am i even a human you know am i benny adam <laughs> if i can't even <laughs> make some money um but but that's what i went back to and even maybe in that moment i wasn't even consuming lectures or anything it was some of the lectures and the seminars and the um classes i attended before those times that stayed with me you know like yeah. I, I mentioned this maybe before, just that one hadith of I am as my servant expects me to be, that hadith Qudsi, that that one hadith carried me for months probably, right? If I yeah. calculate yeah. it, yeah. That I, 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 I lived on that, right? That was my fuel. Um, and then probably another few months was the ayah of you know, like all these different things, um, they carry you. And it, it, it yeah. all comes down to your, your view of Allah. And your view of Allah is obviously linked to your view of Qadr and, and your, you know, the divine decree and believing that Allah has, Allah has written what's best for you, you know. 100%. Um, that is what carried me. So, 100%. so like, yeah, whether it's you're struggling with like makeup or, um, making money or, you know, pornography, whatever it is, like that is um, a strong place to go to. And, you know, there, there yeah. are some people like, 
uh, I'm talking, uh, been talking to, and they're struggling, for example, with, with pornography. They keep going back to it, keep going back to it. The truth is, bro, like if you really regret it and you keep doing Toba, like as bad as it is, there's always space there. There's always hope there, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. So that, that you've got to be able to walk the earth knowing that Allah is with you in terms of not just watching you because a lot of people say it in a bit of a negative context like oh don't do that Allah's watching you always remember Allah's watching you mm. but flip that I mean that's true but flip it on this on its head in a positive way like yeah. you see the struggle you're going through like yeah. this thing that you really want well Allah's watching you like Allah's got you back so so Who am forward, I like, am I yeah absolutely and I, and I like to try and exercise that thought like it just Walk, you know, I, I spend time on my own sometimes where I'm going to work, coming back, whatever I'm doing, got chores, errands to run. And I'm, I try and always be conscious that Allah's with me in this situation. Allah's with me in this situation. I'm, I've yeah. got a difficult task ahead of me. You know, when I went to Tunisia, it was the same thing. Like throwing myself in the deep end, doing all these things I probably never would have done when my dad was alive. But now I've been thrust into <laughs> responsibility and I've got no choice but to try and be courageous with people. Yeah, I'm like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me. Like I'll, I'll be fine. And it just... If, if you really narrow it down, maybe this is that courage is calling book talking a little bit. But no, tr tr true courage is knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than all of this. Greater so actually, than any obstacle. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's what gives me courage. You yeah. Know, Allah, put, Allah put me in this situation. Yes. Allah exactly. knows what I'm capable of. And I know that nothing is impossible without Allah. Yes. So, you know. Exactly. What, that's, what, what more? that's mentioned like in my book many times, which is like, the courage is not like uh, not feeling fear. It's, mm. it is, you could be feeling fear, but then going forward anyway, not because you believe in yourself, but you believe in Allah's ability to help you through. Yeah. And but again, would why would you think that way of Allah if you didn't ever listen, read about his attributes? Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. You know? and, and you decimate your ego that way as well, because it doesn't become an ego. Yeah. And it doesn't ego thing it doesn't lead you to this sort of arrogant kind of i can do anything exactly. i'm untouchable I'm watch me kind of watch me i'm gonna do it watch me <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could bring that up to show the people <laughs> oh dude that kind of content really grinds my gears but it's fine you know it serves a purpose for people let them do what they want bad, to do. bad example yeah i it can't can be a I bad just example can't. for people I used to do that, bro. Sometimes I go in the gym. I'm like, do you know what? Like the silence is killing me. Let me put something motivational on. And I listen to some motivational talks and stuff. And like halfway through, I just give up. I just like want to smash my phone. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> deal with it. I feel like it's all snake oil, bro. But mm. uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, sometimes you have to use whatever works. You know, if yeah, hundred percent. If that gets you through a workout, so be it. Just don't buy too deeply into it. You know, basically, it's just, it's, yeah, it's got no longevity. I think that's the thing. Um, but Lana's knows best. They each to their own. That's just me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, marriage. We've solved it. I think we've solved it, bro. You know, what you're saying about the content that inspired you and that guided you. We've become those content creators, right? For all five of our yeah. listeners. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, the no, more you think about really. it, the more there's there's layers, there's layers. of problems. But like um, an ogre. that, like, the only thing I'm certain of right now, <laughs> the only thing I'm certain of right now, is that whole uh, belief in Allah and the way you think of Allah. Um, I know that is definitely the first kind of p first place to go. But really, you could go through every layer of this, and I'm sure that the solution might even be obvious. For example, you know, if you're like comparing, like, let's say you're a man looking for a wife. And you, you're not satisfied with the physical attraction of a lot of the girls. Bro, you just need to delete your Instagram account, right? <laughs> Stop watching <laughs> porn, right? Whole turkey, and, baby. Yeah, you need to delete this stuff. And then eventually you'll, you'll be recalibrated with the reality of what is attractive and not attractive. You know, that is a simple solution, but it's not an easy one. Yeah. But it depends how, how much you want it. It depends how nah, much you want it. Work. And then no, the, even the thought. Oh. I was going to say, even thought that the grass is greener is probably uh, in their neurons, bro, wired deep. You know, the sooner you can get out of that kind of habit, the better. What do you mean, the grass is greener in what sense? In the sense that what you've said about deleting your access as much as possible to even looking at other women. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. That then recalibrates you to then seeing um, the beauty 
of whoever this potential is. Sure. Okay. That's really valuable and important. Sure. But for some people, I, I, I probably think that society is so inundated <clears throat> with it so much that it takes a lot to recalibrate. You know, oh, because you could just yeah. close your eyes and think of someone. And yeah, I see that. I <laughs> you see know that, what yeah. I mean? Um, but no, absolutely. Like, imagine living in those societies, especially, you know, uh, let's say the time the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah. living in a society like that where um, they, weren't, they weren't ignorant to the potential beauty of women. Of course they weren't. I mean, when the Hur al-Ain were described, they knew what that meant and they were, you know, looking forward to that, so to speak, right? Mm. So they weren't ignorant of what, what uh, the beauty of women looked like. However, you didn't see all of these issues that we got today, right? Mm. You didn't see that. Men got married. Men didn't waste no time getting married. Mm. And that was it, right? It, and What yeah, about I mean, the concept of different. the fact that a lot of men are marrying today assuming that this will be their one wife for their life? versus the idea that this could be my first and then I might have a second, third, fourth. Do you think that would, you know, it, it puts less pressure on that first marriage kind of thing? Oh God, I can't say, because I haven't got that mindset in my head. Mm. Um, but if, do you have that mindset in me? I'm gonna put you on the spot. Where's the spotlight? Get that spotlight on. No, I, I wouldn't say mind. like, I, I, I don't have that problem in the first place in terms of, <laughs> um, in terms of, this whole oh grass is greener or there could be a you yeah know, yeah yeah I don't have that issue Yanni but I, I, I think, can I can understand how it could be a thing maybe for, for yeah you know for for a guy who is extremely focused on how someone looks it might yeah. give him that peace of mind you know yeah but then I again why that, is he so obsessed with how she looks is that normal or is that exaggerated because of the media that is being consumed. I don't know. I mean, look, look, looks play a role up to a certain extent, and we yeah, we can all agree yeah. on that. Do you know what I mean? There, it's not that it doesn't get reignited, though. I think that's another thing that people forget to say. Like the way uh, you know your attraction to your wife isn't something that uh, never reignites after the six months or however long sure, it is for yeah. looks to, to quote unquote fade. No, yeah. they still it still has a valuable role. Yeah, it's just not maybe at the forefront every single time. But when you're at the beginning of your marriage, it is very much at the forefront of your initial reaction, like when you yeah. first see them or when you're yeah. getting married or when you're in your wedding dress or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but it doesn't mean that because it fades, it's not important anymore. It does reignite, but actually yeah. other things start taking over. Like what I mentioned earlier, I've got a beautiful wife, but when she showed me that, when she showed me all those bakes, bro, I was like, damn, I'm going to get fat again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, yeah, this is, this is great. Like, I'm, I'm a happy man. Bro, happy you know, <laughs> You know, like if if whoever's listening who is thinking of I need that ten out of ten beautiful wife, yeah. If you marry that ten out of ten, whoever that is, if that even exists, right? If you marry her, the first day where she starts getting into this, let's say, this disrespectful kind of talk, you're gonna regret it. And the beauty will never help you. It will never help you. <laughs> or the or the first day where the toilet flushes and it wasn't you. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. The, so it's, it's, you, you, they they put up these like crazy unrealistic sort of ideas of what women are, bro. Yeah, Do you know what I mean, when they're actually just as human as you are. That's why so, I tell people, although it's a bit difficult, <laughs> Yanni desires why I tell them, look, live your life, get your get things in place that you need to get in place for your akhirah. Prepare for your akhirah. Prepare for judgment day, and included in that, of course, is working to provide and uh, maybe yeah, but, maybe going to the gym and maybe uh, starting a business, whatever it is you want to do, do all of that. Do all of that. Don't uh, make marriage like your big goal or sole goal in your life. I understand like, you know, you, you're having temptations and that is a reason to put that at the forefront, but don't put it as like, this is the turning point in my life kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I must recognize though that, I don't know about yourself, but I definitely speak from a place of privilege because I can't remember what it felt like before. I, but I do remember very much so like this big weight off my shoulders after I got married because I didn't have to think about marriage anymore. <laughs> so it means I must have been thinking about it a lot prior to that. Yeah, for um, sure. For sure. I just, but like, but look, I'm saying this because when I stopped thinking like that, I stopped thinking like that before I got married. 
Ah, okay. that's you. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying I, I, I wish I could share that mentality, that approach, that attitude with the other people that are that are in the position I was in. Because I would say actually help me get married, not the opposite. You know? Some people are like that. Some people verbalize that a lot. A lot of people I've spoken to are like, do you know what, bro? Actually, bro, do you know what I've been thinking, bro? I'm just not even going to look for anybody anymore. I think I'm just going to wait for someone to find me. Like, that's it. I'm going to... And then... I'm not know, saying that. Down. Yeah, well, some people do. And I've heard it many times. And then the next time I see them, it's like, bro, I need to get married, bro. Uh, yeah. It's, it is <laughs> it's true, inescapable like. in a way. Yeah. But it's yeah, just like, just how you have... You know, you have your slice of your life, which is maybe your career, your slice, which is your Iberda. Then you have your slice, which is trying to find a, a wife, right? But don't make it all that bit a big slice, which is that or thinking. Yeah. It's that thinking that this is very dangerous thinking. When I get married, I will um, lower my gaze. When I get married, I will become a better Muslim, whatever way. That's bad thinking, yeah. Annie. There are certain things that Allah really emphasizes or Allah makes obligatory on you you need to do that from now as much as you can I'm not saying you go cold turkey on everything doesn't always work yeah but you need to be working towards it now don't say when x happens x may never come yeah, yeah 100% 100% um, x may never and there's come. All, there, there's worse ones where it's like I'm going to do whatever I want and I'm just going to get someone from back home god I've heard that many times as if women back home are less than a lone or, or a key. Yeah, I mean, yeah, or I can I can swindle them, or I can you know run fingers around them, or whatever, run rings around them, so to speak. Yeah. Um, although, dude, like women all over the world now have access to everything, so you ain't missing out on nothing. You ain't putting a fast one. In fact, a lot of women back home, bro, they're more familiar with all those tricks because they're watching all the all the soaps, bro. They're watching the Mexican <laughs> soaps. They know, they know all the stories. Know exactly what happens. You ain't messing around. Mm. You know exactly what's happening. Mm. So, nah. I think that and uh, our sisters, bro. I mean, the the full, the overall macro issue is, I think, one of individualism, families breaking down, kind of thing. It's like, how do you overcome that? I think it's, it. it we're talking fundamentally about a dunya versus akhira issue, where one is being prioritized over the other, yeah. and. I don't know, bro. I just feel like you fight that with ilm. You fight that with whether it's ilm, someone explaining a surah to you, explaining a concept to you, explaining a hadith to you. But you need to get it through your head that the person, the, the problem is they might not realize it's a problem. They might not realize they're indulging in dunya and it's causing them to put off marriage and therefore cause issues down the line. They might not realize that. But that's why I suppose dawah to Muslims themselves to get the non-practicing or the less practicing or those who are practicing, but they're not really getting their reminder every week or every day. Yeah. It's about getting those in because when, you know, the girl, the guy, they're trying to get married and they've got those reminders, then they start thinking, yeah, this Although this lifestyle is comfortable, although it's fulfilling my desires in terms of, yeah, I'm traveling here, I'm having this coffee with this person and blah, blah, blah. It's not fulfilling that deep thing inside me, which is my purpose of existing. It's not fulfilling yeah. my social needs. It's not fulfilling my um, sadaqa jariya, like kids and fulfillment and all that. Yeah. There's also an element of psychology there too as well, bro, because I've seen it so many times. I can't remember where I read it recently as well about like the one who has it all still feel lonely because of certain things that they can't fulfill. I mean, look at Adam, alayhi salam. You know, he was in the, he was in the, what's the specific heaven called? I don't want to call it Eden, but he was in the garden. He's chilling and he's probably got it all, mm. got it all around him. And then that loneliness was part of the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled in him and he created Hawa for him. So there's something there, bro. You can run around yeah. chasing all this stuff. You can, and I do actually, uh, you know, subhanAllah, you just made me think like I have a lot of brothers I follow on Instagram, social media, whatever. And I see them, you know, I know they're not married and I see them out there living a really, you know, high life and this car and that and whatever and Dubai and in where, wherever places. And I, I feel something in my heart like feels sorry for them. Like I don't see that stuff anymore and think, damn, I, I wish I was living that. I actually feel, I look at them, I'm like, ah oh, man, if only you could taste what I've got. 
like if only you could see like this joy of having kids or or, or coming home to a, a wife or or whatever it is like this stuff's priceless because when things are going good then your family's around you when things are going bad then your family's around you um you're not going through those sort of hurdles on your own uh you've got a reason to do things beyond just yourself because you might not be in the mood to go out and get that money for that lamborghini or be like it's a constant driver it's uh you know jump in front of a bullet to save my kid kind of drive like that that drive you can't necessities are strong can't be there a hundred percent but it's beyond <clears throat> just saving your own life like you would work harder to save their life than you would for yours yeah you know could you imagine could you imagine like i don't know like drowning bro yourself and thinking oh i'm just gonna give up like i'd give up the fight really quickly you know, I can't swim I very well, that. so I'd probably give up. <laughs> no, I just think I wouldn't put the, as much effort as I would if I saw my <clears> child drown. Like, I'm not scared of heights in the sense that when I'm near a height, like, I won't I won't feel too much. But I will feel insanely scared when, like, someone else is, even if they're an adult. Like, if it's my wife, my mom, my kids, whatever. Like, I freak out. It's probably some sort of, I don't know what it's called, like, phobia that I have. I can't deal with anyone near heights because I've just got this vision of them falling and me being helpless not being able to do anything that feeling just absolutely drives me crazy mm. um and it's that kind of thing there's something within us that urge to serve that urge to protect that urge to provide um it's part of the fitra and you need someone to do that for uh, beyond yourself especially in a society now that doesn't actually have communal service like we would aspire it to have like yeah. doing things for the ummah a lot of brothers, though, they do go out and, you know, volunteer for charities and, and kind of fulfill that in other ways yes. uh, prior prior to getting married and having a family and after as well. Yes. Uh, but without that, you know, self-servitude is never as fulfilling as you would like it to be because you want to share all of this with someone. Yeah, for sure. And there will be a slither of people that, yeah, they, they actually, it might be a good idea that they put off marriage until they're 30 or beyond even, right? It just depends on the person, but it's just generally, it's not a good idea. And especially, it's like, it's one thing if you're staying single, but you're volunteering and you're doing all that. But then if you're staying single and you're just indulging in the dunya, then, okay, that's definitely not going to be good for you, you know? So yeah. um, that, that would make have, a big difference. I, I just don't like the, I don't like the thought process that that has to stop because you're married in, in a certain way. Like, yeah. marriage doesn't take anything away. If anything, it enriches everything well, else. Well, that's one of the layers, though, bro, that actually we didn't talk about, which is um, the family setup has changed, right? Mm. So before you used to get married and you might be living with or right next to your parents and your brothers and sisters and this and that, you get married, you're bringing a woman into that wider family. But now it's like two people on their own, right? So, yeah. So that, like, if you were going to go for a trip to whatever, um, Syria, to help poor people, right? Now, when you're going, you're leaving your wife on her own, right? Or right. you're leaving her on her own with kids, and it's difficult with multiple kids and no one to help. So that actually plays a role as well, because maybe now that's part of the subconscious calculator that if I get married, I'm actually get, I'm going to get sucked into things that maybe a man wouldn't be sucked into decades ago. Even women, yeah. even the, the burden on a mother is is more than it used to be now because yeah, yeah, of this whole thing of living in nuclear families. Yeah. So that's a whole other layer, actually, that makes a difference. Um, makes a difference. You've just you got, to get, you got to get it over and done with while you're still young and have the energy, bro. Who wants to be having kids when they've got creaky knees? Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Honestly. Creaky knees. I can't. I can't run around and wrestle my kids. Like yesterday, I, I realized I was doing lots and lots of work. And then I realized uh, I had an hour before the kids went to bed. And I was like, oh, uh, let me just pause and let me go play with them. So we started play fighting and wrestling and all sorts of stuff. And I was like, dude, imagine if I was like 10 years older than, than, than I am now. I'll I'll be, I'll be deep in the creaky knee territory. Like I'd be having bad back problems. Uh, I'm only 30. Well, I'm almost 30 now. And I feel it every now and again. You know, I'm definitely way more tired than I used to be. I don't want to start, you know. Putting, upsetting my mum who's going to say you have no idea <laughs> 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 you ain't even there yet <laughs> do you know what I mean um, no my love bless our parents bro um, but 100% like take advantage because I always I always try and whenever me and my wife have that thought cross our mind like oh we haven't been out together in such a long time or oh I can't believe we're going to be doing this for X amount of years or whatever we always have to remind each other like 
no, no, this is like that Bitcoin investment. Like it's going to blow one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> Dude, I've just got this vision of like taxing my kids 20% each um, so they can sponsor my holidays and my carnival cruises and all this stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's living yeah. actually, it's living this this kind of dream that we've been talking about in reverse, right? 100%. And you 100%, can enjoy bro. those things. Actually, you could probably enjoy more things when you're 40 than when you're 20 because you're just mm-hmm. like, I just feel like you'll just know more about like what's good and not good and what's what's worth it and what yeah. is it yeah Allah alam, yeah yeah 100 but it's not even Dude, for that as well it's, it's not even always it's like who knows if you even be materially better off when you're 40 right we don't know yeah. but yeah like i don't know i just i think we all deep down we want to live like a life of meaning and um, having kids mm-hmm. is a big part of that it, having kids is like the, the easy route to purpose right and, and to fulfillment yeah. there are other ways and there are harder ways but this is just easy just have kids <laughs> there's layers bro there's so many layers from grand big layers to even the tiniest i'll give you the tiniest layer that fascinates me is okay what is this kid gonna look like like that just that curiosity is enough for me to want to have kids oh you know i i don't have a daughter so like the curiosity of what my potential daughter could look like is enough for me to you know continue wanting to have kids like forget everything that comes with that. <laughs> that mm. is enough. Like I'm just like curious. I'm. I love all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it's almost like RPG kind of thing going on. <laughs> you know, it's like a video game. A bro. bit of Dali, bro. Absolutely. It's like <laughs> put, put the AI generator. You know, Moroccan Tunisian plus Algerian. <laughs> what, what are you gonna get? <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude. Let me see. <laughs> so 100, 100. percent That's a that's a driver and. Um, yeah, we were doing a bit of that, weren't we? When I was in Tunisia, do, looking at some uh, genealogy stuff and my family tree and trying to trace things back. Um, and it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, I kind of found out where I came from a little bit more. Um, kind of found out stories of my great, 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 great grandmother and granddad and all that kind of stuff. But that's what you're creating by having a family and 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 carrying that on. Like that gives me pride that that, you know, that continues. And, and actually, now that I'm registering that and I'm trying to make notes of this and, and trying to uh, cement my family tree, it continues. And like, you know, I've lost my father and that also validates everything I thought about families and why I should go for it. You know, because now my father got to see my kids. My father got to see my wife. It fills me with pride and he was happy and he was proud of me and that kind of thing. So, yeah, don't miss out. Don't miss out while you still have the chance. Um Think about it seriously, because all the stuff that you're chasing, all this dunyawee things is just, you know, it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. And if you put all your happiness and hope into that, then uh, I've got bad news for you. It'll always let you down. Right, bro, I've got to go, bro. I know we were a bit early, but I have to go. I was going to say the same thing, actually. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. Perfect. 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 <laughs> okay, let us know what you think, uh, either in the comments or... Um, if you go to mynicepodcast.com. Actually, I don't know. The email's not even on that. Anyway, mynicepodcast at gmail.com in, is the email. In the Telegram. Come into the Telegram. In the Telegram. You can also contribute Ask. there. Yeah, we got bonus content there for free. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. Sometimes means sends selfie videos when he's replying to people. Sometimes I send <laughs> voice notes. Yes. Bonus content for free. Wait yeah. till we start charging for that. It'll be a different story. Yeah. Okay, Jazakallah <laughs> khair bro, good conversation. Subhanakallah, my behamdik shadu an ala anta, astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. We are not, uh, we don't accept liability for anyone's marriage choices. No. <laughs> <laughs>